I really, I want, I want to apologize for the time, but we are cutting five minutes from every session, so we are يعني, uh, back on track. Our mobiles are silent. Is hella basma hada mobile viran? Okay. Startups are being set up offshore and have operation in a country. Developers might be in another and marketing and sales in another market. How can we enhance the ecosystem to have MENA startups not to be limited to one country, but to grow in their country and beyond? Please welcome with me our honorable guest for this session, Mr. Mohammed Al Zahrani, CEO and founder at Jadwa Cloud, Mr. Kareem, Innovation Drive Enterprise Director at DCO, and Mr. Hussam, founder at Chamber Index, moderated by Luma Fawaz, CEO of Oasis 500. Fadalu. صباح الخير بصير نسكر الباب ورا لانه كثير صوت عالي سوري هاي هاو ار يو جود مورنينج ماي نيم از لما فواز اي ام يور مودريتور فور توداي ام انفورتشنتلي اور ثيرد بانلز از نوت جونا جوين اس محمد فور بيرسونال ريزنز وي اونلي هاف 20 مينتس اون ذا كلوك اي تراي تو بي از بريف از بوسيبل اون ذا انتروداكشنز ام We are currently at the start of village where all the magic happens. So we will try to make sure that we are relevant to startups. Um, as introduced, we are talking about a borderless region. Um, There's so many dimensions to a borderless region, economic, political, etc. But we're only going to talk about how can we help startups access markets, recruit, and access capital across, across borders. Um, let me introduce my panelists very quickly, and then we can dive into the topic. Um, with me today is Hussam al-Din Twil. Um, uh, he is the founder of Chamber for Chambers, right? Chamber Index, yeah. Uh, which, is, um, which has been doing so much in Tunisia um, on the bilateral relationships between Tunis and other countries, and we'll, we'll allow him to tell us more about that. He was the youngest executive to get the Nobel Prize in 2015. Uh, with us today also is Kareem Samakiyeh. Uh, Kareem is currently uh, working with the DCO, uh, and his, his um, day job is to connect member states with each other for that capital access. Um, Oasis and Jordan is a member of the DCO as well. Uh, and we've also been, you know, tremendously thankful for all the connections that they've provided. Um, let me uh, tell you something that's, you know, not unique to Jordan, and it's been happening everywhere. Uh, today, um, we're seeing a lot of collaboration between countries. Um, borders are only a line on a map, right? Uh, but there's so much to it. Uh, there's also competition. Competition is a challenge as well when you're When you open up your markets, uh, recruitment is an issue. Um, uh, competition for smaller companies, startups that are competing globally as well. There are no barrier, uh, barriers to entry as well. So we're going to talk about all these topics. Let's start with uh, Kareem. Tell us more about what you're doing at DCO, and then we'll kick start the discussion. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it as brief as possible as well. But uh, DCO is a newly uh, established international organization Uh, it stands for the Digital Cooperation Organization, and what we mainly focus on is digital prosperity for all. We, we do, uh, all our work revolves around uh, enabling the digital economy. We focus on three main uh, activities, advocacy, advisory, and facilitation. And my role within the DCO comes into the facilitation space where we're working on bringing our member states together and creating borderless markets for SMEs and startups within the DCO member states. Uh, we're, we have several initiatives that we're working on, uh, hopefully a lot of which uh, you will hear about uh, very soon. 
uh, one of which includes a uh, network for entrepreneurs uh, from the 11 member states that we represent uh, that will facilitate the interaction between those entrepreneurs and those startups, but mainly focusing on entrepreneurs. Keeping in mind just one last thing here is that we represent 600 million uh, people in terms of a population, total population, and total GDP of around 3 trillion. So the, the size of the market itself when you create those cross borders or open up those it's barriers huge. to entry is huge. Can you give us an example of a company that's benefited from your services? <clears throat> so I'll give you a couple of examples. It's not specific companies. I don't want to mention specific companies, but uh, w the way we work is showcasing companies to each other, showcasing uh, countries uh, or entrepreneurs within countries to each other. One of the examples that we're currently working on is a uh, bilateral engagement between Saudi Arabia and Pakistan where, and we're piloting this. Uh, this is something that we want to replicate across our, the other member states that we work with. Uh, selecting specific uh, companies from Saudi Arabia and taking them and exposing them to the market in Pakistan, giving them a whole a holistic view of what is happening in Pakistan who are who are the main players, what does the ecosystem look like, but also introducing them to potential uh, partners. So we're not just talking investment, we're talking business opportunities. Uh, we're talking uh, potential acquisition, uh, acquisition potentials uh, to integrate those markets together to facilitate that. We're lucky at the DCO because we work with governments, but we also work with the private sector and civil society. So we bring all those actors together uh, to facilitate uh, the interaction for startups. So we're working on soft landings to reduce the cost and time uh, needed to set up a company and start operating in different countries. Uh, one of the initiatives that uh, will be launched soon in 2023 is the startup passport for DCO startups that will be able to uh, move around the different member states and be able to operate in those member states. Reach out to Karim if you want a startup visa passport. Um, Hassam, can you tell us more about the bilateral Estonian-Tunisian relationship and how that works and what are the benefits of opening up both countries? Yeah, sure. So, so the uh, Tunisian Stone Chamber of Commerce is what we call a cloud chamber. So we don't, it's not like typical Chamber of Commerce with a big building and so on. <laughs> so we are in the cloud. So everybody is, uh, their office and their desk is actually their phone or their laptop. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a new concept. We had to revolutionize 400 year old industry. And so we have started it uh, out of a necessity because uh, Tunisia and Estonia, they do have their sim similarities, mm -hmm. but they do also re mutual needs to, to be met together. For example, there is a talent shortage in Estonia, which is known as a big IT hub. You know, they have about like 10 unicorns. And at the same time, we have about 10,000 IT graduates per year. And many of them either work locally or they go abroad via startup visas, mm -hmm. as Karim said, mostly in France or in other countries. So, um, so we want to connect them to, um, for, for two things mainly. So um, it's actually to, for the talent shortage, so they could actually employ Tunisian engineers and keeping them home because, you know, we had like uh, very difficult brain drain, people leaving all the time. And so they get paid over the market value, at least 1.5 the market value. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is actually know-how transfer. So how we do that is with the soft landing. And soft landing is we enable their businesses to, or even ours, to set up shop um, in first place and make it as soft and smooth as possible with less costs involved. Mm -hmm. So say for example, you know what you wanna do, for example, in, in, in you are like I don't know, maybe Saudi business who want to set up shop in, in Jordan or in, or in Tunisia. So we, we're we gonna have an intro call with you. I'm gonna get your needs and we're gonna tell you if you are fit or not. So we're not gonna waste mm -hmm. your time either. So not open borders for anyone. 
It's yes, it bilateral is. in nature. Yeah, actually, we we have started already beyond this. Um, we are, we are more open. So I was doing as a job uh, for about like six years and a half. I was doing soft landing for European startups, but starting from next year, second quarter, we are about to launch like initiatives where we're going to consolidate all the available spaces in the country, starting mm -hmm. by co-working spaces and desks, and we're going to allow um, companies from any country with which we have already like bilateral relations, trade relations, to establish their shop in Tunisia. So, I mean, in, t in terms of, you know, market size of Estonia and Tunisia, it's clear the win-win situation. But it's not always clear with other countries. Uh, just because of, you know, we've, we've seen so many incubators and accelerators open up their pockets for companies that want to set shop in their uh, respective countries. Um, and it's not always easy. Jordan, as a small market, is always keen on exporting services, accessing markets, etc. For bigger markets, the needs are completely different. Um, what are the differences between the bigger, the bigger markets that are member states versus the smaller markets, and what are the needs uh, of the startups? So, the markets, obviously, b bigger markets are interesting when you're going and you want to grow. You want to grow the, the sales aspect of the mm -hmm. business. Uh, when you're looking at which market to go to, I believe, and, and this is what we try to sort of align within the DCO member states and within startups in the DCO mm -hmm. member states, is what are the strengths that each of those countries offer? Uh, Pakistan graduates 28,000 engineers on a yearly basis, okay? Uh, Saudi Arabia obviously is a beautiful market for uh, selling your products. Uh, one of our member states, Nigeria, is another beautiful market for uh, growth of the product. Uh, for each market that we look at, or each country that we look at, has a specific strength. Being able to highlight that strength and tap into that strength is what will enable that mm. cross-border to succeed. Uh, I'll give you an example, like focusing on priority sectors, uh, Rwanda recently has been pushing, obviously, a very aggressive digitization agenda with a focus on uh, clean and renewable energies. So this is one area that any startup in the region or in the DCO member states that's focusing on or working on something related to green energy should be looking at. Yes, the Rwandan market is a small one, but like we say here in Jordan, it's a beautiful market to test your product. Mm. Uh, a market like that in Rwanda could be your portal to the rest of Africa. So focusing on the strength, whether it's the talent or the market itself or the expertise that is available in that market. I think this is how you have to look at the different markets when you're thinking about where to go. Uh, can we focus on the talent component of the cross borders and the open borders? Um, what, what do you think, Hassam, is the future of work? Is it... Uh, is it going to continue being remote? You know, the c COVID gave us a chance to think about how we recruit, right? And we're more efficient and we have more, um, you know, uh, caliber from different areas that can complement our teams. Um, how do you think that's, you know, spanning out? Well, actually, I started working remotely since 2015. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a long way since COVID. Uh, but also, um, I mean, COVID brought the future to our doorstep also. So many people in the beginning, they were reluctant to, you know, employ people rem remotely because they don't see them, they don't know what they are doing. Uh, if you are a startup doing R&D, you are afraid probably for your IP or intellectual property. But um, I've been reading a recent report, I think from the previous quarter, done by Gartner. Right now, as of today, 58% uh, of companies are employing people remotely. And uh, just what uh, Karim said, uh, it's actually important to know your market. So you are either, uh, so actually one of the three. So you are either going to uh, employ people in another market just because this is where the talent is, mm -hmm. or you're going to another market to access it, to sell in it, or because maybe it's big, the parity purchase power is, is bigger, is higher, so they could purchase a product. Or oh, third thing, you're gonna do both. and you're not gonna find the, the three components uh, in, in every country. Market. 
Yeah. So it's not possible. Like for example, right now there is an initiative based in Europe. So what they do is they bring in like the scale-ups. So they're mostly startups which have raised at least 50 to 100 million dollars in, in total rounds. And they help them to access the African markets not just to do BPO and outsourcing, no, they mm. want them to sell in those, in those mm. markets. Mm. For example, in Estonia right now, over half a billion euros have been spent already to co commercialize their services in, in Africa. And, um, and yeah, so um, I think it's important to choose your, your formula. So either it is, if it's just a need, you, you don't have to launch uh, like a new branch, a new country. You can use what we call employer record. An employee of record, there are a couple of businesses which have uh, like taken off since COVID. They started doing something else, and now they're doing something. One is valued at 12 billion, another one is valued at 3 billion. What they do is you don't need to do HQ and go through all the taxes and compliance and benefits to hire people from, let's say, 20 countries at the same time. So they have their own entities, and you sign a contract only with one. And, um, and, and it's important because uh, you, you don't need to open an entity just for a team of five or three people. But if you want to go like more intensely, maybe uh, like an R&D center commercialize, it's important to launch, uh, to launch maybe like regional HQ or do a branch because there are taxes and IP to protect and so on. Mm. Uh, how does, you know, can you walk us through an example of a startup reaching out and getting you know, uh, uh, a startup passport and going through all the member states and expanding? So we haven't launched that yet. But I mean the, when the, it starts. The thought process, let's go through the thought process and obviously we'd love to get feedback from the audience who are our beneficiaries at the end of the day we, that we want to serve across the DCO member state. And the North Star is harmonizing policies across those member states so that startups don't need to go through the struggle of, first of all, learning what those policies are uh, and abiding with them. I agree with Hussam that you might not need to set up an entity at the early stages. Uh, you might even be able to get away with uh, remote work for the majority of your employees, but there should be, at the end of the day, if you want real business, you need to have a presence in those countries, especially the countries that we're part of uh, in terms of our member states. But being able to get to that North Star, to be able to get to that North Star, first of all, we need to show government as well the value that comes mm -hmm. with bringing companies, startups, scale of innovation-driven companies into their countries. But we're beyond this point, right? Yes and no. We're beyond this point maybe in MENA. There's a bit, a bit more knowledge about that. But there are countries in Africa where this is not clear yet, and Hassan, maybe you can speak to that, where it's not clear yet in, in terms of opening up your markets. Okay, and for the governments that are on board, how, that, how, how would that look like? So the startup comes to you. So the startup comes, they go through an application process. We have parallel tracks or working on parallel tracks with governments, directly with governments, for them to be able to speed, uh, fast track mm -hmm. their registration process. Okay. So you're still at the early stages going, go, going to go through a registration process. Uh, you fast track that registration process and you subsidize the cost of that registration process. Why? Because when talking to startups, the two things that we hear about is time and cost of registering. Time it takes you to get registered in a specific country and start and hit the ground running, as well as the cost associated with that. Next, you go and you partner up, we're partnering up with the, the uh, co-working spaces and uh, the incubators, the accelerators, so enablers within the entrepreneurial ecosystems over there to allow those startups to be able to soft land basically, have a launch pad where they can hit the ground running. The third thing is integrating them within the community in each of those markets so that they are aware who the startups are, who the VCs are, who the support organizations are, what sort of programs the governments are offering. A lot of governments are pushing today to offer programs on that uh, to support startups. Yeah. And that, that's where we believe it will facilitate. This is the facilitation that we do in terms of getting them into a country. 
we're not doing the work for them. We're just making it easier for those startups and scale-ups to move into the other countries, creating the opportunities for them. And this is one tool that we'll be using, obviously, is the network, the Stride network. So keep an eye out for that, which will offer you these tools and which will have the process where you can apply for the Startup Passport, but also get the knowledge you need about each of the markets and make an educated decision about which market you want to go to before applying for a passport in a specific country. Would you help in identifying these markets for startups? I mean, not, I mean, we always see startups expanding to the usual markets, right? The usual suspects, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, etc. There are other markets that are on so, the radar. So what we're doing is we're providing the information, okay? Yeah, when you're looking at expanding into a specific market, you want to understand, first of all, the basics, the macroeconomic of uh, indicators of the market. You want to see how active the ecosystem is. You also want to see if your product actually aligns with the direction of the country in general, the, the se priority sector. So we're providing that information on the site for you to be able to make an educated decision. We're not creating that content. Of that content not. is readily available. We're just putting it under one umbrella so you are able to go look at the different markets. Today, DCO represents 11 member states between the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Europe. So the market is significant, and each one of those countries has a flavor to it, and each one has opportunities in it. So your ability to identify the right market for your product and is, is what we facilitate, basically. Um, Hussam, any parting words, um, specific advice to startups that are, you know, expanding, recruiting, uh, how and where? Yeah, so uh, just like most my VC friends say, talent is everywhere, but opportunity is not. And um, so when you think of uh, going to another market to either uh, like set up a branch or commercialize or both, what you should look for in the end, how, no matter how much money you have raised or your uh, reputation, um, after proving your uh, product market fit, when you go to another market, you have to prove your uh, culture market fit. So it's important that the people you hire, they fit into the internal uh, culture mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. the company. And I have learned this the hard way, so I'm saving you months. <laughs> Absolutely, make use of that. Uh, Karim. Uh, I think, uh one thing that I, I have to say for startups here in Jordan, and this is something that you don't feel unless you actually go and spend time in another market, in a significant market, is once you've validated, don't be scared to go out and try things out, even if it doesn't work. Go out to, a to the next market, a more lucrative market, a bigger market. Jordan is a beautiful place to validate. Uh, to make sure your product is working, to make sure the business model is valid, but getting out and going to a bigger market to be able to grow as soon as possible uh, is going to be super important, mm -hmm. extremely important. I mean, it's so difficult to cover such a big topic in only 20 minutes. Um, but, you know, the conclusion is, you know, our markets just got bigger, our, our talent pool just got bigger. Um, there are challenges, obviously, but you know, it's, uh, it's up for grabs. It really dilutes the concept of you're stuck where you were born. Um, so just try to make use of it. Reach out to our panelists if you have any you know, specific questions. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry that we couldn't take any questions, but I mean, sorry. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.